Alrighty, welcome back everybody. This is Michael and this is the uh, next tutorial on how to hide stuff in terrain. Uh, this particular episode we're going to go over on how to hide uh, sleeper zombies uh, underground. Uh, it's a neat little trick. Uh, only special use uh, case scenarios you would probably want to use this, but it's uh, a nifty little trick. So one thing you need to uh, do as far as um, spawning zombies underground is you always need to have them sitting on something solid. If I just went ahead, let me go ahead and grab some sleepers in here. And I tend to just use the uh, the sitting sleeper because uh, it uh, he only takes up uh, you know one block space most of the time. If I just placed a, uh, a sleeper here and surrounded it with terrain and used the density trick as I uh, demonstrated in the previous uh, uh, video tutorial, um, when he spawns in, he's actually just going to start falling in an infinite loop all the way down to bedrock, come back up to the, you know, to the surface and just continue falling, falling, falling. So they will never actually pop out of the ground. So you always want to make sure that they do have something uh, to uh, uh, to keep them from falling. So let me go ahead and get rid of him first. So I just use just a regular, regular block. Now you always want to use something where the um you know a full size block so that they're actually sitting directly on that if i did this on a let's say for instance a a half block and i put a sleeper on here um he's going to float above that until he spawns in and anytime a sleeper spawns in um where they're not directly in contact with a, a block uh they'll they'll stand up so um even though he'll still be asleep he'll be sticking up out of the ground so you always want to make sure you use uh, something that's a, a full block, or at least the top of it, uh, is at the same surface level where he is uh, going to be sitting. So let me go ahead and replace this back in with a regular soil block again. So you always want to start off with something to sit on, and then you also want to give them a means to help to help them get out of the ground. Now most of the zombies are able to. You know, once once they've woken up, they can they can hop up, but they may accidentally wander off and go into that infinite falling loop. Um, so I always like to give them some sort of way to help them pop out of the ground. And there's various blocks you can use. Uh, you can use half blocks. Um, I kind of like using uh, this one, which is called the wedge tip full. Um, so it's kind of a uh, dormer style uh, uh, block. And what you want to do is put this on all four sides um, so the ramp side is facing them. And I'll explain why I'm using this one instead of just a regular ramp. So now he, when he wakes up, um, he's going to go one of these directions and it'll pop him out of the ground a lot easier. Um, if, you, if you use something lower, like again the half block, um, if a crawler spawns in there, sometimes they get stuck. So... Uh, they may not totally pop out of the ground as easily. Um, so that's why I tend to go with these ones. They will stick up a little bit on the, uh, this, this top ridge will stick up a little bit above the ground. Uh, but we still have to raise the overall ground level a little bit anyway. Um, just because some of these zombies are relatively tall, like the zombie Bo, I believe his name. He's pretty tall. Um... If you don't do anything at the, at the top part, his head is going to stick above the ground and you're going to see him uh, before uh, he, uh, he wakes up. So now we need to kind of fill this in. We're going to go ahead and just throw some terrain blocks in each of the corner. I'm just going to use the same topsoil as I have here. And I'm also going to just surround this entire uh, area with these uh, same terrain blocks. So I have backspace, do my Z key, and Z key there, L to fill. It's kind of hard to see because it's all the same color, but it's basically just kind of building the uh, the terrain all around this. And do this last side here, Z there, Z there, L to fill. So now we have him totally surrounded. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my um, shift Z to select the corner of this uh, upper terrain block and the same thing over here. So I have this whole selection uh, to include the zombies and I'm going to use my control up arrow key to create that terrain bubble that I explained in the previous video. 
and that sucks that over. Now you see there is this little edge of the uh, of those little uh, wedges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my selection box up by holding the G key down and just dragging that up. And I'm going to move this up just using my up arrow key. I'm going to click it 10 times. I found that that covers pretty much all of the zombies except like you can do this. You can do this with animals as well. So it's not going to work for a, you know, a bear or the mountain lion because those are pretty huge uh, animals. Uh, but for regular zombies, just 10 up arrow clicks will, and I've lost count already. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that will give me all the headspace I need for them to be in there. And if we go in here, you can see there's no air pockets in here. So he's totally encapsulated within the terrain. And now I can just copy and paste this as many times as I wanted to. And because I use these uh, triangular shaped ones, I can put these one right next to the other by overlapping these two side ones. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and select just like this area from here all the way over to here. And you also want to make sure you get the the block down below so you get that box that he's sitting on. So I'm going to hit my shift key and drag this down one. So I have him, the triangular uh, blocks and the terrain selected. And now I'm going to hit control C to copy and then use my G to move it over. And I'm just gonna do it. Actually, I can overlap it right here because this is the same wedge on both sides. So I'm gonna hit Control V and you can do this as many times as you want. So one, two, Control V, G. Oh, actually, you know, one thing I forgot. So you notice that this is no longer as tall as this one. You also want to select the air above it as well. So let me redo this here. I'm just going to hit the Z up here and actually let me get it right here. So I've got that side and this side, and then I'll expand it down to using my control G one, two. So now I have the air, the zombie and the blocks, and then the box that he is sitting on selected. Do my control C again, hit G, one, two, control V, and now you see my terrain is lifted up as the original one was. Control V, G, one, two, control V, and so on and so forth. So we'll just do that many right So if I fly in here, you can see now that they're sharing a, a wedge block in between them so they both have a ramp going up and again you can just fill as many as these want you want in here uh, so what I usually end up doing uh, for the rest of this is I will select my far corner over here do the far corner over here and then I'll use the replace function to fill in the air uh, with the topsoil so let me just go ahead and Go into my third tab over here um, and down here in the old we want to select air and we want to fill it with the topsoil box and we hit replace those. Now you can go ahead and um, raise these up as well so it's nice and even just so it doesn't give anything. I'm just going to leave these as is for now. Um, so now we need to go ahead and create our sleeper zone. One thing I've found uh, in the prefab editor is I haven't uh, done any saves on this yet. I, I just saved it when I first created the uh, the uh, the file, um, but I haven't done anything since I've you know added all my terrain and whatnot. One thing I've found out is if I went ahead and create my my sleeper zones here, um, and then go through the process of you know, updating the uh, the imposters and all that sort of stuff, uh, you lose the sleeper zone. And what I found is before you start laying down your sleeper zones, you always want to make sure you do the update imposter first. For whatever reason, whenever you do the update imposter the first time, uh, your sleeper zones just disappear. Uh, so always do this first. And we'll go ahead and save. It's going to move it to the center of the workspace. And that may be part of why it's losing the sleeper zones is because it does move it to the center of the workspace. Um, so now I can, and it looks like I lost 
my my air space. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the whole space here, uh, just so it's all the same level. You can see the the edges of those those wedges sticking up here. So I'm just going to pick my the air of over the whole thing, and I'm just going to move everything up. 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, something like 10. Uh, that way the whole thing is nice and flat. Now it is going to be a little higher than your uh, surrounding uh, soil, uh, but you can you know put some variations in there by raising and lower, uh, lowering certain areas so it doesn't stand out so much. So let's go ahead and create our, our sleeper zone uh, where you hit F6 and you select sleeper volume and you just go ahead and resize it uh, to make sure you encapsulate the zombies and we can just kind of do all this now there's various ways you can do this but what i like to do is i like to have this zone completely underground and i'll have a trigger zone somewhere else because one of these things this is one of those things where you sort of have to make it believable um so just having zombies popping out of the ground um all of a sudden isn't really realistic and, you know a, a a good use case scenario something that that where you can see them popping out of ground out of ground is like at a graveyard um and i'll, I'll show you how i do the graveyards um this would be something that is you know maybe it's outside of a poi they go inside the poi they're clearing it whatever and they go into a a trap or a, a trip uh sleeper area that activates these guys so i'm just going to go ahead and, and create another um, let me go ahead and select this and that's one of the things that's always a pain in the butt because I put my sleeper zone inside the ground and I can't select it again. So let me just uh, shoot a, hello, come on, let me shoot a hole in the ground here. There we go. Just so I can grab it and I can extend it out to the back at least so I can, I can get it easier in the future you don't want to have it extend beyond the bounds of your terrain but just on the edge there that way i can select it um without having to dig a hole like i just did there let me go ahead and fill that hole in again so i'll go ahead and create a trip zone let me go ahead and give this an index number so you hit the k number here and what you want to do is just give this any number i just give it 11 and go ahead and set however many you want. I'm just going to go ahead and max this out. I have eight. So I'll go ahead and, and max these out to eight and you can set these to whatever uh, group or types of, of zombies you want. Um, again, with these full wedges, the crawlers will be able to get out of it. If you use something like a half block or something like that, you probably want to choose a group that does not have the crawlers because they do have a chance of, of falling into the, the world and, and just going into an infinite falling loop. Um, so let me just go ahead and create a new sleeper zone here. So we'll hit our F6 again, create a sleeper volume, and I'll just put this just kind of along this front edge here. So when I walk across it, it'll wake these guys up. Um, I ne also need to set these both to attack. Um, they won't do anything until you trip this one. So let me go ahead and hit my K key here again. I'll give it the same number, which is 11. Uh, you want to make sure this is set to zero and zero if as long as you have no zombies in there and we'll go ahead and set that to attack and let's also set this one to attack as well like so so now we can go ahead and go through our, our thing we can go ahead and update our imposter again we'll make the save changes um, you can do the strip textures. To do, I don't have anything with textures in there, so you don't have to worry about that. But it's a good habit to get into. I'm sorry to strip internal textures. Don't do this one. This will mess you up. Strip internal textures that gets rid of if you have you know block against a block um, that have textures on them uh, and you can't even see the textures. That's still taking up memory when you load the game. Uh, so it's always best to strip those out uh, to reduce the overhead on your computer. Um, go ahead and save that. Um, I always just go ahead and, and do the prefab properties and just hit save. That way the XML has been updated and just created a prefab thumbnail. Uh, I found that getting all those steps done, um, you know, guarantees that when you do the play test, it'll be fine. So we're pretty much ready to go ahead and do a play test. Uh, the last thing I want to do is to raise my uh, ground level here. So let's go ahead and move that up two blocks. Uh, this part is still kind of uh, poke up above that, but that, that's fine. 
So let's go ahead and save that again. Now, one other thing that you have to take in consideration, uh, especially in something like this, uh, let me turn off the ground plane here just real quick to show this to you. Um, because I don't have anything tall on here, um, the bounds for this particular POI are not going to include my trip zone here. Uh, so if I go ahead and turn on my update bounds, um, it's showing that my bounds only extend up to the top of the ground here. Um, so this trip zone will not be included and it won't activate these zombies. Um, so what you have to do is just put in some sort of object in here just to give some height on there. Um, let me just go ahead and grab, let's just grab a tree and we'll just grab this guy right here. We'll plop him down. Oh, I can't do it. So I'm going to have to, and unfortunately you can't get rid of this uh, bounds box uh, anyway. You just have to get out of the editor and go back in. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll uh, place that tree down. All right, so we're back in again. And uh, another problem with uh, that uh, bounds area, it not including the stuff above it, it didn't include the air that was above the terrain, which I had increased the density to suck this up. So let me go ahead and reset that again. Oops, let me do the regular Z. Oh, come on. The regular Z. There we go. Yep, right there. Then let's select the opposite corner and up 10 times. Okay, we're good to go there. Uh, let me go ahead and grab my light pole again. And slap you down there. And we'll just put you... I'll put you right here. That way it'll indicate where they, the boundaries is. Now if we do our update bounds, it will now include my trip area just like that. So that's one thing you got to keep in mind if you're doing something like this. You have to have some height to it in order for your, your trip zones to, to be working. So let's go ahead and save this and uh, run our play test. One last try here. Okay, here we go. So let me go ahead and grab the dev gun here. And we'll wander on up here and see if we can trip these guys. So if we, I'm just going to fly over above it. You can't really see anything from above because we hit all that stuff. So if we go back down to the ground here, I'm going to break my leg. And we'll go ahead and walk into our trip zone. And here they come popping out of the ground. And now let's see the crawler was able to get out of there without any problems because of those tall ramps. And this is how you can spawn in zombies from under the ground. And again, this is for something like this, I would have the trip zone, you know, maybe inside the POI. These guys would be waiting on the outside. So they're going through and, you know, they, they think they pretty much cleared everything maybe near the end before they'll pop up on your, uh, your compass. Um, have them trip that off and then you, they won't see these guys pop in. They might think it's a, a wandering horde that comes by, but they're actually part of the POI. So let's go ahead and do a use case scenario where you can see them uh, or where you would want to see them actually popping out of the ground. And that is in a kind of a graveyard situation. Let's go ahead and go back to the editor and we'll go through a real quick tutorial on how I like to do those myself. All right, so we're back here. Let me just go ahead and turn off my uh, sleeper volumes here so they're not on the way. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a graveyard over here on the side of it. Um, so what I like to do is start off with a layer of gravel underneath. If you recall from the uh, previous tutorial, um, when you're doing these terrain bubbles over the top of objects, um, the, the surface of the terrain will take on the texture of what's underneath it. Uh, so if we have a solid object underneath there, like a casket or something like that, or just some regular building blocks, it will take on the texture of stone. Uh, so what I like to do is put a layer of gravel on the bottom layer here, um, because that will kind of show up as part of the uh, burial mound um, where they, they dug it up and kind of had scarred the ground. So let's go ahead and fill in an area here just with gravel. So I'm just gonna go ahead and build on this with uh, my graveyard. So let me go ahead and grab a casket. And you can use any one you, actually I like the, the old wooden coffins for some reason. 
So let me go ahead and grab the, uh, the random helper. So I'm going to go ahead and embed this coffin inside the, uh, the gravel here. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot out two blocks to get this to fit into. Now, if you recall from my previous video, or actually um, when I was talking about over there, you want to make sure that the top surface of this is something that the zombie is going to be in direct contact with. If I put this in here like this and put the zombie on top of it, he is going to be kind of floating above it. And when he spawns in, he's going to automatically go into a standing position. And we don't want that. So let me go ahead and get rid of him and get rid of this coffin. And I'm just going to rotate this coffin upside down. So I'm going to go ahead into advanced rotation and get it so it's upside down just like that. Let me get it facing the other direction because that's where the headstone's going to go. Where'd my coffin go? There we are over here. Like, come on, come on, come on, come on. Get in, there we go, like so. Okay, so I like to put the zombie sitting at the head. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the, the ramps again on the side. And I'm going to extend this two blocks because I'm going to put some gravel uh, in this space here to again kind of carry that... Uh, disturbed dirt above it. I'm not going to put it anything on this side because I'm going to have a gravestone on the upper part of the ground here, and that's going to prevent him from falling off the edge that way. Uh, so they'll automatically uh, pop up on these ramps. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in this part um, behind him at where the headstone is going to be sitting on top with gravel, and then this part in front of him with gravel. And again, that will help bridge this gravel will bridge over the top uh, to create a, a solid gravel kind of surface. Now the rest of this, I'm going to go ahead and use my terrain filler. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the corners, sort of like what I did with the, uh, the previous example. And then go ahead and go around the entire edge uh, with the terrain to, um, to kind of fill that all in. I also want to do at the foot of here as well. Go all the way to there. L. And the same thing here, L, and there we go. I mean, I'll just go ahead and fill in these as well since, since I'm already on the edge of the POI, like so. So we're gonna basically do the same thing here. I'm going to just select the area um, kind of in these, these corners where everything is. So I'm gonna do my Control Z here and do my Control Z there and then hit my Control Up arrow to bridge that over. Again, you can still kind of see those little wedge tips popping up ahead, up, up at the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move this up one, and I'm just gonna move this up just enough so that those peaks aren't showing anymore. So three's fine. Now what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to select the area above where the sleeper is. So that's basically directly above the coffin. Um, so I'm going to select that, and then I've already moved this train up three, so I'm just going to move this up seven, so it has a total of ten. And again, that gives you enough space, and I've lost count again, but I'll take it to about there. Basically, when it starts freaking out, you see it kind of popped into a pointed top. I'm just going to bring it down one, and that should be enough of a mound where the tall zombies aren't going to be poking up above the ground. And let me just go ahead and grab a, a gravestone here just to pop on top there. And again, this, this serves two purposes. It, it prevents the sleeper from going this direction and he won't fall off the world. So let's go ahead and I'm going to select the area above because I still want to, I want to copy the air as well. And again, because I have the, the wedges in here, I can actually put these really close together. So let me go ahead and select here over to here. And then I'll bring it down so all the way down because so you want to make sure you get the cop coffin as well. There we go. And I'll hit control C and then G and I can do one, two. And again, this is where my wedge is. So that'll just replace the one that's there. Oops, I hit the wrong button there. Let me go back, copy this again. Control C. One, two, control V, 
One, two, and you can space these out to give it a little bit of variety. So I can go ahead and take this one a little bit all the way over here to that. Give some, some space, some space in there. Uh, however you want to do that. And it, you're going to see some of these funky things like this. Don't worry about that. Uh, when it, when it uh, generates in the world, these will all smooth out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole thing here. Do a control Z, control Z, we'll select this whole thing here. We'll do another control C to copy. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this over to the side. And whenever you, cause I'm gonna rotate this. Anytime you rotate a, uh, a block, you always wanna get it away from everything else because when it rotates, it's gonna just have a swath of destruction and wipe out uh, stuff that's in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit control V here. Hit my X button twice to rotate it 180 degrees. I'm gonna hit Control C again to copy, and then I'm gonna hit J to eliminate that. And now I'm going to move my box back over here uh, to the edge of this right there, and I'm gonna hit Control V, and that will make a duplicate here. And now what I can do here is just uh, do my Z over here, and I can just do a Shift Z over here, and I'm going to use the replace function with the third tab. We'll select air and we want the topsoil to be our replacement. And that'll replace those blocks. And now we have a nice little graveyard. And you can do a gravel path or anything else you want to do in there. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a new sleeper zone here. Let's go ahead and hit our F6. Sleeper volume, there we go, now we're working. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Um, I like for all these uh, graveyards to have the uh, the sleeper volume totally underground, and then maybe put uh, you know a pile of loot in the middle of here with a trigger zone around it. So they're actually in the middle of the zombies when they come popping out, just for that little surprise effect. Let's go ahead and get this uh, resized here. So we got these guys in the zone. We'll go ahead and take it all the way down to the surface. Now, even though this looks like it's above the surface, it's still not going to activate. I want to make sure I at least have one edge showing on the on the outer area so I can still select it. So let's go ahead and hit our K, and I'm going to call this, uh, give this an index number of 22. I like to use not just one, two, three, four, because if you notice, these have different colors. So the these yellow ones are the same color. If you use one, two, the shade is just going to be so slightly different that you can't really tell the difference. Um, but if you use bigger intervals between them, then um, the color shows differently. So this one's a, a brighter blue color. Uh, so that's just another little trick there. You know, use your index numbers, you know, wisely so you can kind of see, visually see which ones are tied to which. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and duplicate. Let me go ahead and... Uh, Oops, let me go ahead and select that again. Hit my K. I'm gonna go ahead and max this one out as well. You don't necessarily wanna do this in game, uh, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to do the special infected. Uh, the really cool one for these ones is the spiders because they just come flying out of the grave site. It's a sight to see, uh, it's very fun. So let me go ahead, I've got this one selected. So I'm gonna to go to my, um, second tab here and hit the copy sleeper volume. So that will copy it above it. I'll just go ahead and resize this. Like so and like so, so it's kind of in the middle here. Again, I kind of want to, I want to lure the players into the middle of the, the graveyard here uh, before the zombies actually come out. And come on over here. Like so, I'll make it a little bit bigger just in case they try just try to reach across to uh, to loot whatever I've put down there and make sure it is down to the ground like so. And if I hit my K button, you see it carried over the 22. You do have to make sure this was one thing that will change. So if you had the previous one on attack and you made a copy, it will always go back to active. Um, so we want to make sure we check both of those. I did not make that change on the first one, so I didn't want to make sure. I do want to make sure this one is set to zero. It is set to attack. It doesn't matter what group it's set to. Uh, let me go ahead and reselect this one, hit K, and make sure it is set to attack as well. So I think we're good to go there. Um, let me just go ahead and, um, 
Yeah, I'll just leave. I don't, I don't need to put a lid. I just know if I walk in the middle here, I'm going to go ahead and trip it. So let's go ahead and save this and run the play test again. All righty, we're back in again. Let me go ahead and grab our gun again. And let's uh, make sure I'm in God mode this time so I don't get myself hurt. So here we have our nice little graveyard. I can actually walk across these. They're not going to attack. Um, and again, as I probably mentioned in the previous, I guess I can't do it because it's too deep. Um, now as I walk down the middle here, they all wake up and here we come the zombies just flying out of the ground. And as I waste my time getting uh, killed here, oh, hello there. So yeah, so this is a, a really good use case scenario for uh, using the underground zombies in a place that you can actually see them. And again, this one is, you know, kind of obvious. It doesn't really make sense. Again, this is something I would have hidden away somewhere so the players don't actually see it happening. Now, one exception to the whole um, having a box to sit on type sort of thing are the vultures. So let me go back into the editor and we'll show you what you can do with vultures. Like I mentioned, uh, one exception to the uh, having the having the sleepers actually sitting on a box are the vultures. And the main reason for that is because when they actually get activated, they fly. Um, so they're not actually going to go into a falling mode uh, once they uh, once they wake up. So let me just go ahead and get this uh, activation zone out of the way here. And this is really very simple. It's 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 so easy. I'm just going to go ahead and grab some uh, some vultures here. And we'll pop those down here. Now I'm just going to use the shift, uh, shift uh, right click to just put these in the ground just like this. And you see I'm just kind of doing it. So let's just go ahead and place a bunch of these in the ground. So I'm going to do my shift click. Just do a bunch of them in the ground here. I actually have some of them over overlapping in that other zone, no problem. And then we'll just manually do these one at a time here. So I'm doing my shift to Z to select, control up arrow, and then backspace to get rid of the selection. Okay, so that's a moment. So we'll go ahead and create a new sleeper zone here. So we'll go ahead and hit our F6 button, do our sleeper volume. And we can see them all under the ground here. Let's go ahead and resize these. Get where I end oblique so I can see those a little bit better. And same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and make this flush to the surface. Um, this is again something that I would use where they're not gonna see vultures popping out of the ground. I use this in a recent POI. Um, where you know, I, I, you've probably done this yourself playing the game. Uh, a lot of times when you go to a POI, you're going to kind of scope out the outside area, try to clear it out first, you know, so you, any dogs or stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, once they go into the POI, they might go to the end loot. I actually have these, um, these vultures as the final loot stage. So on the top of the POI where I had the final loot, I had a trip zone, so it would not only activate some zombies up there, it would activate these guys. So while you're fighting off these guys, all of a sudden you have a flock of pigeons coming at you to, to peck at your ears. So I'm just going to go ahead and create another little trip zone over here on the side. Let me just kind of put a block here just so I know where that trip zone is. Put that there. I'm, I've already got, I still got this one selected. Before I do that, let me hit my K. We'll go ahead and call this one 33. Um, and again, we'll max this one out. I'll not max it out because you don't want to see me going crazy trying to swat a bunch of buzzards out of the air. Again, we want to make sure it is set to attack. And we will go ahead and go into our second tab here, do copy sleeper selection. We'll resize this. Kind of fit around our little box over here. Oops, I didn't mean to put that there. Oh, there we go. So this is our our trip zone for the for the vultures. I'll make this a little bit small so I don't accidentally brush across the other one there. And now that is ready to go. Again, I want to make sure 
because when you copy it, it doesn't copy the sleeper volume trigger. So I want to make sure that is set to attack as well. It's still 33 and I want to make sure these are zero and zero and then we're good to go. So let's go ahead and save this again and we'll do the vultures flying out of the ground trick. All right, let's go ahead and grab our gun again. Get myself in God mode here. We'll zip on over here. So if I, once I go into this, so I hear kind of heard a little bit of flopping. That's when the, that's them just spawning in. If I go over here and activate it. Here we have a whole bunch of vultures. Again, this is not something that I would do where the players can see it. Again, as a kind of a, a hidden where these guys come from sort of thing. Uh, just to make it more exciting and not, you know, kind of give away the whole, the whole game. So this is how you can uh, create uh, zombies spawning out of the ground. Uh, again, this is something that you can use in pretty much any occasion. Again, I would only use uh, this trick where you can see them in a graveyard type situation. Uh, anywhere else, I would kind of put it out of sight so you don't see a whole bunch of zombies just unrealistically popping out of the ground for, for no reason whatsoever. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you have any questions, please be sure to, please be sure to reach out to me. Uh, I have several other uh, tutorials that I've posted previously, and I'll leave a link, link to those down below. I'd like to thank you all for joining me, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.